Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and today I want to talk about code portability or platform portability. You might recall in my last video, I created this app. It's a simple little thing that I can tilt the board and this ball moves around on the display. So we've got a display and we have an accelerometer. And this is running on the Raspberry Pi Zero. This is a .NET app. I showed that the same exact app will run on this Raspberry Pi 5. It will actually run on a Pi 4 or a Pi 3 as well. You also might have noticed that I had some headers soldered to this board, and I had that uh, for a reason. I wanted to show the portability of this. So I've got the code for this app, and I'm going to run the app on this STM32-based Meadow device. So basically, we're going to come from the Raspberry Pi processor to a microcontroller with the same code. So let's go take a look at the code. I had to make some modifications in order to make it do this, but it's still the same code will run on both. You might recall that I had abstracted both the drawing and the receiving of the accelerometer data into this app engine. And this is the Raspberry Pi application here. So all I had to do in the initialize function was create the I squared C bus from the device and then pass that bus into the app engine. For the F7, really it's no different. I'm going to get the I squared C bus from that hardware. So this device here is, you can see an F7 Feather V2 because the app is defined that way. Whereas with the Raspberry Pi version, you can see the device is a Raspberry Pi, so the device here. So the magic of the Meadow stack is it passes you the correct device. So when you call create I squared C bus, it gets the proper bus from the proper pins on the hardware. So this gets it from, I don't remember something like pins three and five on the Raspberry Pi. And over here, I think it's D07 and D08. Completely different pins, but they do the same thing. We pass that in, and then it uses that to create the sensors for both this display and the accelerometer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug this, plug the meadow in on top here, deploy the same application, and we'll get the same behavior. And now that it's deployed, you can see that I get the same behavior here. And the Raspberry Pi is no longer plugged in. So I've got an STM32 microcontroller running the exact same code that was running on this Raspberry Pi Zero with the same peripherals and getting the same behavior. That is the power of Meadow. There's even more though. Let's say I wanted to change displays or I wanted to change the accelerometer and use different hardware for these. Could I use the same code still? Yes. Take a look at this. I've got, this is a project lab. It has the same processor on it. It's in a different form factor. It's down here. It's called a core compute module. The pins are actually in a different location, so we have to deal with the fact that they're no longer on D07 and 8. They've moved to a different location, but I've got a completely different display here, different resolution, um, and I have an onboard accelerometer, which is actually a completely different piece of hardware. This is the MPU 6050, and I think this is a BME 688. Um, regardless, it's completely different hardware. So I'm going to show that I have the exact same code running here. Same code that was running on this Raspberry Pi 5 is going to run on this as well. So not only do I have platform portability, different processors, I have peripheral portability, different display, different accelerometer, and it's going to run on this. So let's go take a look at the code on how I did this. The first challenge that I have with 
the project lab is the accelerometer is not in the same orientation as I have here. So I have to deal with the fact that left right on this and left right on this are not the same. What I did was I just created this settings uh, class. The class keeps things like which axis is left right, which axis is uh, up down, and whether or not they have to be inverted. It also has settings for a display and an accelerometer. So if I come back over to the engine, you take a look at the previous video, and I'll put a link up above. This is a little bit more complex. What I'm doing is I'm taking in settings now. Before, it was just hard-coded to use this MPU 6050 and the SSD 1306. Now, we'll pass in settings, and if the settings that get passed in, you can see these are nullable. If they're not null, it will use the override, otherwise it will continue to use the existing ones. It also is a little bit more complex here in the gyro update because now I have to deal with which axis is left right, which axis is up down, and whether or not it has to be inverted. Otherwise it's the exact same idea. It reads the accelerometer, determines whether or not we need to move up or down, and then calls over to the display service to move it. The display service, this is the thing that draws the ball and moves it around. This has not changed at all from the original code. You can see here that for the project lab, which is running the core compute, I call project lab create. This gives us all of the hardware settings for this uh, piece of hardware. So it gives us access to the display and the accelerometer. And we pass those in along with these axes and uh, inversion of one of them. So let's take this. Again, running on the feather, I'll unhook it. I'll just hook this up, deploy the code to this, and we'll run the exact same thing. And you can see, I tilt it, and it moves around. So different display with different dimensions, different accelerometer in a different orientation, different processor than, say, the Raspberry Pi. Same code running on every single one of these. That is one of the benefits of using the Meadow stack for doing your IoT development. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching.